day here in Brisbane. Lovely tuning weather. We've got the car and the dyno. Barry's waving his magic. We're just slowly tuning all the uh, speed levels and um, pressure variants. So, no power on this yet, we're just doing little bits at a time. So we just had a miss up. It sounded like a gunshot going off the engine eating itself. Turns out, I forgot to take the bolt out of the exhaust that was holding up an O2 bung. So we shot the O2 but in there anyway, uh, just so it can actually work. And I'll get a proper thing tomorrow. wiring all right it turns out it's the uh the tires on the dyno because my wheel alignment's out so it's just chilling him away so you're saying i'm getting 23 pounds at 3000 rpm Well, I got a 75 mil pulley, and if that can't keep us under 30 psi for a free bar map, then um, yeah. What happens when you reach 30 pounds? It just goes boost cut. Boost cut. Bop, 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 bop. Oh well. So it's either I slow the, the charger down with a bigger pulley, or I get a full bar map sensor. All right, Barry's getting nervous. We're doing our very first power run. Oh, I just got to set the motor up first. All right, he's got to do some stuff first, but then we'll be back. I'm nervous. Three making 23 pounds, and it's only a 75 mil pulley. The Whipple had a 64 mil pulley. All right. I should have brought another one of those clamps, but I've double clamped it anyway, because this was starting to move at 23 psi, so hopefully I will keep it where it needs to be. Actually, very nervous about this. Very nervous. So here's the last graph, and as you can see, I only made around 24 psi, and then obviously boost creep right at the end. So that was at full noise, and we started down here around about 20. So we're already about three to three, two to three psi above last time. Uh, the question is, I don't know how it's going to go in the motor. Um, we're spinning the blower a lot slower. So it's, um, it shouldn't be producing much heat, but we'll see. You scared, Barry? Yeah, Barry. There we go. Even he's scared. I'm scared. That pulley's freaking get effed. Here we go. Very first power run. The doctor is diagnosing. the shit out of me that was loud scary yeah <laughs> what was it oh, it didn't make anywhere near as much what was that um that miss though right at the end no 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 they during when that first run 
Yeah, you know, we couldn't figure it out. It, it, it went away. I just reset everything. It went <laughs> away. There we go. IT crowd. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah. So, we seem to be on par from the last run with the Whipple. But obviously we have not even touched timing or anything like that. So theoretically, the 75mm pulley can do exactly what that 64 in the Whipple did on a good day. So we're going to play around for some parameters and give it another shot. And if that goes alright, we're going to put the party pulley on. We're still cracking away. We're running into little teething issues. Whoever thought we'll go pull too many volts on the CAN bus. Therefore, O2s don't work. So what we've done is tapped into some more um, circuits down there to get power for that. And we'll try again. And hopefully we don't run into any more issues. muzzle issue after issue after issue we're still working out for uh, the main narrow tonight uh, we're getting there we're tackling challenge by challenge but one of the main things at the moment is belt slip as that little man says I need to design a, uh, a better tension nut or just I should have brought a, a shorter belt Anyway, we're working on it. It's getting on to 10 o'clock at night and uh, I'm going to be on the road in five hours heading north to Rocky Nut, so I want this thing done now. <laughs> right to the end and the bells had it belt's gone that's the end of that no more tuning tonight I think we're fine. Well, Barry, that's it. All you can do. Fucking can't. Well, it's back to a six rib pulley, a six rib belt for the moment. That's just so we could just get it onto the trailer and head to Rocky Nats tomorrow. And up there, I'll change over. To... I'm just going to put it back to the factory tensioner and set up for the moment until I can figure out what's happening. Right, Barry, how do we go? There's a bit of belt hole on the roof and everything. <laughs> so the last run that was actually one of the best runs tonight. Let's see if we can quickly get that on the phone. So you're saying that at the, uh, at the start of the run, we're at about 2,200 RPM. Uh -huh. We're just starting to make a bit of boost there as we're opening the throttle. The air intake temps are 50 degrees at the moment with a water temp of 31. As we start to climb up in boost, this is a luxury of these external coolers. We're now at 12, we're still holding at 50, at 2800. Uh, we'll get her up to 17 psi, now our air temps are actually dropping. We're at 2900 RPMs, air temps are at 49. Continue through, 
they're down to 46 at 2900 so we're on on the dyno load right now at 3000 46 degrees air intake temps at 17 pound she's off the rollers away she goes what do we got at 20 pound oh, 20 pound 42 degrees and it sits at about 42 degrees from 3900 revs all the way through till we pull her up at about 6700 on this girl we don't want to rev the poor girl to hell and you can see we're at 26 psi 41 degree air intake temps the water in the cooler is at 31 degrees so anyone that wants to doubt external coolers <laughs> there you go there you go proofs in the pudding proofs in the pudding data doesn't lie nah. never lies so APC. you're saying apart from you working very hard tonight the uh, water air cooler is working very well as well oh man they work brilliantly best invention ever water to air coolers heavy uh, they have a shit in the morning and uh, lose some weight it's all good um so what's the go to now we just new belt new belt we'll get to, we'll get some right spark plugs for her smaller pulley some more tension and we'll whack her up to about 32 34 pound we should happily crack well into the deep into the 600s and yeah. happy days because we're, ma we're making similar power with less boost yeah 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 our, our best run tonight was 568 with a bit of an issue at the end of the run due to a plug blowing out spark blowing out not the plug blowing out <laughs> and yet our torque for that run was more than what it was for rev 610 horsepower okay. run with a whipple so yeah. yeah once we get a few more gremlins sorted i think this little girl's gonna um go hard go happily into the deep 600s and should keep everyone happy and scared mm. all in one go oh happy gas we'll try oh, 600 <laughs> we'll try 600 rear wheel killer what's 800 horsepower oh yeah we'll spin the blower a bit harder yeah yeah see if mr harrop built a good one yeah <laughs> sweet oh that's good all she wrote today folks um no more dyno but i'm off to rocky nats in five hours four hours Three hours by the time I get home. Two hours by the time I get packed. One hour by the time I'm at the BP drinking a coffee, waiting for Sean. So we'll catch you next time on episode 10 Shed TV. Well, Barry. Oh, fuck. He's hit the door. <laughs> he found the door. They're along the door. They're a big fucking door, aren't they? <laughs> Oh shit, I found the fucking dino. Yeah, dino. It's big, big, <laughs> big fucking heavy, smelly, fucking hot thing behind you. So, yeah, first first of TVS 2650. We're slowly getting there. So, got some teething problems. Teething problems? <laughs> hey, but we're making more power for the size of the pulley than we would with the Whipple. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And more track, you, you say more tractive effort, more torque? Yeah, there's more, with our 568 run, which wasn't our nicest run, mm. we actually had more torque at the wheels than we did at 610 yeah. with the Whipples. So yeah. there's less parasitic loss, I think, with the TVS, which would kind of explain the more torque for less power. Yeah. But it comes on nicer. It, it's not even breaking a sweat the, mm. the unit itself to touch mm. is it, it, well the engine's running a lot cold. i remember when we were in here with the uh the whipple well, i could not do that hot. it's hot but it's not melting uh, hot no and we've been sitting here idling for another 10 minutes like it's, it's not me. burning my hand hot but, you know it's nowhere near as hot as what the whipple was no the whip nowhere near as hot as an m90 spinning <laughs> some ungodly speed yeah but yeah it's um i'm just gonna work a few little issues out hmm. new spark plugs and new leads would have been nice but yeah. so new spark plugs new leads new leads uh little wiring fix-ups a few little wiring gremlins we've got to get out belt here. alignment uh, belt yeah. alignment yeah. belt alignment belt alignment <laughs> more ribs <laughs> More ribs. Yeah, she was having a bit of a belt slip there. 
Yeah, belt dust is just from normal use here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's belt slip. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon someone, if you had the choice of buying a Whipple or a, t or a, or a TVS, and someone was actually having an engineer a kit, not two blokes in a shed. I'll take a TBS any day. There we go. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down, TBS. Proof in the pudding. Tuna says so.